Hello, Chemistry 1A. In this recorded video, I will be reviewing the laboratory techniques and measurement laboratory exercise found in the uh, HOL uh, website. So let me start right off by showing you the procedure and what I need from you in terms of completion of the assignment. So here is the HOL website. Here is the laboratory techniques and measurement uh, experiment. So I'm going to open that up. There we go. And it's broken up into kind of three pieces. The exploration, which is some introductory stuff, some, some uh, pre-lab assignment, if you will, three separate exercises, and then a final evaluation. The exercises one, two, and three, I want recorded in your lab book. Uh, that is to say, I want the data recorded in your lab book. The exploration and evaluation need not be recorded in your lab book. So I'm going to open these up uh, and walk through them. I am not going to demonstrate every portion of this experiment, as some of them are exceptionally self-explanatory. Some, however, need perhaps just a little bit of background information. So here's in the exploration, you will uh, simply click through answering the questions and then the questions will get captured uh, in this HOL portal. So again, I'm not gonna answer them for you, but I can see, uh, or you should be able to see that you can in fact answer them without too much difficulty. Once you have finished with this exploration piece, you move on into the experimentation piece. And again, I wanna reiterate, that when you start this experimentation piece, I need the data recorded in your lab book using the format and procedures that I've talked about for the lab book. Yes, the HOL website will also uh, require you to put data into the website and we'll capture that. But again, I wanna emphasize, I do want it written into your lab book. So there's a list of materials that are needed uh, all right, so this is all the stuff that's needed for this particular uh, experiment, but all of that equipment is, of course, in your lab kit. Uh, there are three separate pieces, length, temperature, and mass, volume, density, concentration, solutions, and dilutions. And before I continue further, I want to point out that this entire experiment is really all about uh, the, the proper measurement of laboratory data uh, or measurements, as well as recording thing with the recording information with the proper number of significant figures. Whether or not you get the quote unquote right answer really is not part of this exercise. So when I'm reviewing things again, I'm going to be looking uh, largely for proper use of significant figures throughout. So let me go to this first one, length, temperature, and mass. And this is the first one that I am going to review. Uh, you can watch this video and should watch this video, but there are a few things that I need to talk about with regard to the uh, scale. So there, this should provide you a slightly larger picture. This scale, or one very similar to it, has been provided to you. And I want you to notice that there's, of course, a cover on it to protect the balance pan from damage. So I'm gonna put that cover on and uh, if I turn it over, uh, that of course is the back of it. It needs batteries and again, to take the top off, you just kind of push it out of the way. The reason I'm emphasizing this is I want to make certain that you have put, kept the lid on while you're doing that because you're gonna be squeezing on it. And if you squeeze on the balance pan while you're taking the batteries in or out, you will down, damage it and will not be able to get reliable results in this experiment or any of the subsequent experiments. Okay, so I've got that off. I believe that there are batteries that were provided with your kit. Uh, I strongly urge you to take the batteries out after each usage. That goes back on and you can see of course, the measurement on uh, the scale. 
So that's really all I have to say about the scale. I'm going to put that back on, take my batteries out, and continue on. So that was the digital scale. Um, again, I'm not going to demonstrate this. This is really all about gathering some items. And if you don't have these particular items available, uh, then, then find something else to measure. Uh, it says to look at the calibration marks on your ruler. And I have uh, yes, my ruler right here. Let's see how I can hold this up. Stop sharing for a moment. It uh, doesn't show uh, real well on the video. Uh, you've got yours, of course, right in your hands. Uh, about this, this device has measurements to the nearest millimeter. So on this device, you should record things to the nearest tenth of a millimeter as your estimate, as we have discussed. So that's um, the ruler. Um, so that's all about these length measurements. Again, you see there's a reference to recording them in data table one. Uh, the, uh, if, if you don't record something in data table one, the uh, website will not allow you to continue on to further websites. Temperature measurements uh, says gather a 100 mil glass beaker, et cetera, et cetera. And it says the thermometer is provided in a cardboard tube. Well, it may be cardboard or it may be plastic, such as this, and the other thing, I'll go ahead and take this one out. This is likely the type of thermometer that you have, and note that it is not the type of thermometer that it is there, that it, they are describing, excuse me. Um, they are describing one with a mercury bulb at the bottom or perhaps some other type of bulb at the bottom. Um, and so this one is going to give you direct digital measurements. There are, Again, you can see, I think on there, there's of course the on off button, and then there's the buttons over, uh, pardon me, uh, over here to change between Fahrenheit and Celsius. We of course perform all of our measurements in Celsius. Um, so that's about all there is to say on the thermometer or more specifically, this is a thermocouple, um, but you know we often use those words interchangeably. Screen sharing here in a moment. Um, so it says to fill a beaker, doesn't matter you know, which one really, to fill a beaker with hot water. So I'll do that. And the purpose of this uh, is to ultimately end up, <coughs> excuse me, uh, getting the water to boiling. So I'm going to do that in a moment. I'm going to pause my video. Well, well, I guess I don't need to pause. So I'm going to get some hot water. I've got that perch there. Now, please note at this point, I am going to put on my safety glasses as you should anytime you are working with chemicals, flames, et cetera, which is certainly what we are doing right now. Um, I'm going to stop sharing then and talk a little bit about these um, uh, hot, hot plates or um, uh, sterile devices that we have. So you can see I put my hot water up here uh, let me get this out of here. These or something very similar to it has been provided to you. Yours might look a little bit different. Uh, in this case, these are sometimes referred to as, as sterno kits. Um, it has a wick, very much like a candle wick. And I don't know if you can hear it, but there's liquid inside of here. And of course that is a flammable liquid. And so for that reason and others, we don't leave them uh, tipped over for a long period of time. Doing it as I'm doing it here for a moment is of course not a problem, but you wanna make certain that these are stored upright or they can leak a little bit of the fluid out of them. The other thing I'm gonna point out is these are of course rather simple uh, to light. I've got a standard uh, you know, butane lighter and there it's lit. My guess is that you can't see it on this video. And in fact, when you light yours, 
it will be a challenge to see as well because it burns with a very uh, uh, light blue flame. Uh, it's really uh, pretty obvious to me and will be obvious to you um, when you're looking very, very closely. So that's how this gets uh, heated up. Um, you can cautiously, right? Not so cautious that you, know, you need to worry about it too much, uh, but that gets put under there, of course, to get the water boiling. <coughs> Excuse me. The particular purpose of this portion of the uh, experiment is, of course, to get the water boiling. <coughs> Excuse me. We know that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. It is a definition, right? That's, that's the definition um, for the Celsius scale. So we're bringing this water up to a boil so that we can uh, validate the accuracy of our thermometers. And let me uh, give you a little bit of spoiler alert right now. The thermometers or the thermocouples are likely not going to read or measure 100 degrees Celsius, right? That's called just instrument error. And you know, if it does, it's largely uh, purely luck. Um, it, these thermocouples um, are rather inexpensive. You might call them cheap. Um, and it's entirely possible that they're gonna be off by a, a couple of degrees Celsius. Okay, uh, I'm gonna stop this uh, portion now. Um, what I'm gonna do to shut that down. Uh, I had it here a moment ago. Shame on me, where did it go? Excuse me for a moment. Yes, here it is. Uh, these aluminum little lids are provided in your kit and you just drop that right over there and it will put it out immediately. Uh, I do not recommend that you try to screw this back on while the flame is, is going. It's a uh, pretty certain way of, of burning yourself. So I put that on there. Um, you can see I can hold on to it. It is just the slightest bit warm, uh, but certainly not so warm that's a problem. Um, so, you know, again, just uh, pick that up. I'm going to set it aside. And when that has thoroughly cooled down, I'm going to put the lid back on it. Put that off to the side. Okay, back to uh, screen sharing for a moment. So um, I've just talked through uh, the issues here associated with the uh, heating and uh, really nothing more to say than about all of this. I'm gonna let you follow those instructions as they are um, rather straightforward. Uh, let's see. Uh, part three, the mass measurement. Again, this goes to the use of the scale. Uh, it's just looking for some items to measure uh, the mass of. And again, if you don't have pennies and quarters and dimes, after all, who uses change or coins or actual cash these days, then use something else of equal, uh, approximately equal mass, and it will work out just fine. Uh, so having uh, completed that, there will be a number of questions uh, associated with the experiment that you just did. Please answer those questions in here. So moving on next. Okay, next, there we go. Uh, again, back to experimentation. Uh, so that was the first portion, length, temperature, and mass. The next portion is volume and density. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. <clears throat> 